All right, Comic Fam, this is a big day, all right? This doesn't happen very often. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. We have a major, major hunting find, a hunting success. Jeff, the Overstreet Price Guide, is known to be a dealer, all right? You're known as the Golden Age Guru, my friend, and you landed one of the most impressive Golden Age collections. I think in 2020, this could be one of the biggest war collection finds in the last decade. It very well could be, and, and I want to get into this real quick, guys. So you just mentioned war comics. So this is 1950s comic books, all right? And this is the hottest, hottest genre, I believe, right now of collectible because there has been this buildup underlying in the community in demand for war comics, okay? And especially in grade. And when I say grade, all right, that means maybe 5'5". Five, five. All right, that's actually kind of a pretty high grade for some of these war books. Like a mid-grade copy is looked at as like a VF copy in this part of the hobby. Exactly. In this collection that I come across, and I'm learning a lot about this war. Like I've heard the buzz, I've seen the buzz. But the grades that I got on these books, and I spent probably, God, 40 plus hours on 61 books. Total. Pressing. Oh my gosh. How many books did you purchase how many did you get submitted let's go over some numbers because comic fam this is huge yeah this is a good point so this collection about it wasn't massive but there were 61 comics the amazing thing about them is the grade okay and when i'm saying great i submitted 45 of these books i probably should have submitted more but again i wasn't 100 percent familiar with what's worth grading what's not 33 of them of the 45 i submitted came back highest graded. Comic fam, did you hear that? 33 of the 45 submitted are currently the highest on the census. I'm literally surrounded by some of the most wanted war books right now. And we got to go over it because I have the overstreet here because I want to blow some minds. This is a largely misunderstood part of the collectible. And we have some prices to gauge because really this market is untapped. We don't know a lot about what these are going to gather, but we have an idea because of your network. This is exactly why keeping a good reputation in the hobby is important. Okay. I've been in it a long time. I've networked, I've met people, I've kept um, numbers of people and an understanding of who wants what. So when something does come across my table, I know who to contact. And that's exactly what happened with this. I've met collectors who want to collect high-grade war books. And they're very, very ferocious about getting these, these comics. So they've been looking for 10, 20 years for books in 6.5, okay? And they can't find them because when there is one, they have to be the first one there or somebody else gets it ahead of them. And we have 9.0s on this table right now. Yeah, I had, I believe it was 5.75s, 5.80s, Five eight fives, like six nine O's and two nine twos, something along those lines. Okay, wow. just a touch of it. So you're getting an idea right now how high these books were. And if it wasn't for some interior haloing on some of these other books, I, I would have seen more nine O's even. So it, CDC does nail you for that. So remember that just as a side tip. If you see a book and you got interior haloing of yeah, like can tanning, you, what does that look like? Give a some of these members don't even know what that looks like. I have had a lot of gorgeous books at times, but when you open them you will see on the inside of the front cover and the back cover interior, a tanning line, all right? Not even like a halo. It literally it's like looks a oval a halo. almost, like a halo, yeah. Yeah, and so that's what will nail you. You can have a book that looks 9294, but it's going to knock you down to maybe 70. I mean, I've been, I have been butchered by that haloing on many books, and so you got to be careful when you're looking at a book because I'm like, Despite the handling, this is a gorgeous book. It's got a grade pretty high, but no, it, they, they really hit you for that. So this is an example of a risky deal. You made out really well. Like this is very impressive and a huge find. However, let's chat about the risks involved with that. Let's chat about what you had to do to even screen these to figure out if they were going to be worth what you paid for. You know, let's get into that because you had to do a lot of work to make this as good as it was. This one right here is a great example of the work that it takes to get into some of these books and also the uncertainty. All right, why don't you take a look at those staples for a second? Oh gosh, dude, this is ridiculous, man. I know, it is. I mean, the highest graded on that before was a 6.0. I'm holding a Battlefront issue number 15, a 7.0, the highest graded on the census currently. 
Now, a lot of people just don't know. Even if you have a high grade looking war book, you don't know that it's coveted by the community. I have never seen that book. I did not know. But for me, that was my favorite cover. And I tried to do numbers and research and I had I had nothing to go by. Okay? Well, I can tell you right here, Battlefront issue number 15 in this grade, a 7.0 guides for $100. So these are the types of numbers that you're trying to kind of give you some guidance of where to go. Like, you know, it's going to be more than $100. Okay, the market's hot. You're going to get more than that. Okay. But it's knowing those people who want that and are tired of looking for as long as they've been looking and realizing that every half a point is an insane escalator to the value of the book, which I truly didn't understand until I started doing my own research and having these books in hand, getting final grades, talking to some people, networking. You hear it. You're, they're like, wait, you have what? I've been looking for that for years. And that right there is an inflation that Overstreet can't account for. Exactly. And not anybody can really count for because not everybody knows. They just don't. And even the people who end up buying this, until you put a price on it, they don't even know necessarily how much they're going to put towards wanting it, that book, once there's a value on it. Because they might think, hey, I wouldn't pay more than $800 for that book. But then seeing it, realizing it, that like, wow, that's the number, I'll pay it. What would you guess? Let's give it estimate because again top of the market top of the market um i would say to a collector we're talking easy 2500 to 3000 dollars oh my goodness man crazy stuff a bit and, more than the overstreet says and i had no idea like when i first got that book i was like okay if i look at the staples first of all it stressed me out because it looks like the staples are very much going to pop or have already torn there I had that book raw and I looked at it. I was like, oh God, I don't know. This is going to be a 5 or a 7-0. I don't know how they're going to hit this because the book is so nice. It's a dark cover, but it's kind of not even loose. Just it's It was just attached oddly in production. So keep this in mind, comic fam. During this transaction, during this sale, that's pretty expensive. The assessment, you, you got a little bit of time. You're spotting these little things. You're tallying it up and that's all for one book. You got over 60 of them there to look at. So you, it's, it's just work. It's, it's planning. It's, it's using your knowledge, but also assessing that risk. What if there's resto? What if the staples do pop? That, 12, that $1,200 to $2,000 price is going to be thrown out the window if any one of those things happen. Well, I'll give you an example. Like I said, the 7.0, there's probably $2,500, $3,000 book, okay, to the right collector, all right? And again, it has to be the right collector, and I found the right collector. So that thing is probably going to go to a new home here. But if it was a 5 two points less, we're talking like maybe 400 bucks, 300 bucks. Wow. So you can see the huge difference in the potential risk because if you're wrong, then you're, you're way off on it. All right, well, let's take a look at this 9.0 that you're sitting in front of because this one's just screaming at me. A paratrooper cover. Yeah, this is an interesting book. So this is a 9.0, and guess what? The 9.0 is the second highest graded. Second highest graded on the census. Comic fam, I can't stress enough. Like, I'll do my best to get some pictures, but the colors pop like I've never seen. It, this just, it looks so nice for being from 1955. Well, it's just crazy. There's a 9.2 of that already out, yeah, okay? Because right? when I went through all the census, there there was not many books higher than a 6.5, okay? So to see a 9.2 and be like, I have a 9.0, it's like, oh, 9.0 is second highest graded, but a paratrooper cover. And there are a lot of paratrooper collectors out there because they're great covers. And that is a that is is in your face paratrooper as yeah. you get. Dude, he's gunning people down as he is descending. And it's a Russ Heath cover. Russ Heath. There's the Boom. name. Okay. So awesome, dude. Russ Heath for war converse is one of the most in-demand artists. All right. And this collection had a lot of Russ Heath, a lot of Joe Manili. He did a lot of war covers as well. And you're going to see some great examples here, obviously. And it's just interesting, the difference, because Heath worked in a lot more shadows. Manili was a little bit more detailed in a different type of um, stroke style with his pen. So you'll, you'll see how there's a difference in artwork. You're like, oh, okay, you'll start being able to tell them apart. All right. So I want to know now from these ones that are in front of you, 
any of these that were just kind of a surprise, like you're like, oh my gosh, I struck gold and didn't even really know it? <laughs> I would say 33 of them are. <laughs> no, but for real, I'll give you one example. This right here is one of the most coveted war covers there are. What do we got? Battlefront issue? Battlefront issue number 26. All right. Well, Overstreet says at a 8.5, meh, 130 bucks. Which is so off. Okay. <laughs> even with the market not being hot, that is one of the most coveted books this okay. is really cool because like a somber cover looking down the snow is oh man it's it's breathtaking i i just really dig the contrast of the battlefront logo to this dark midnight sky but to many people you know they need this savage war cover they need like people dying on it this isn't really given that vibe but it is very coveted. It's wanted. Oh, it's it's so high in demand. It is the book of this entire run that everybody wants the most. Sweeping for mines, dude. He's holding a metal detector. I'll give you an example. Okay, a 4-0 of that book. Actually, the highest graded before that was a 6-0. So I would say a 6-0 would probably sell for, you know, since it's highest graded, I would guess maybe $1,000, $1,200, okay, give or take. Maybe more. It's like I said, it's extremely coveted. 4.0, exponentially less. You're talking probably like 200. All right. So 200 for a 4 uh, Where do we sit with an 8.5? I would press the market really, really hard on that. And if I find the right person, I can get probably eight to 10,000 for that. Ooh, eight to 10,000 on this book. Like literally 10 times what Overstreet Price Guide reports it as. And since you mentioned it, Russ Heath, this shadow work that he does with like his very particular line work that you can tell from a mile away this is a classic example of that i mean just with the shadows on the mountains the snow i mean this dark sky contrast offered him a lot of opportunity to like showcase his shadowing abilities we focus mostly on battlefront and the majority of this collection which i believe was the entire run of battlefront okay from number one up to 30 high 30s i believe oh, maybe i can't 40s. believe he kept them all together how lucky is that man yeah it's pretty spectacular and so honestly like i, I think we mentioned earlier that this would be the greatest uh, culmination of battlefront uh, as a collection in the highest grade right now and unfortunately it's all going to get pieced out okay to but it's going to go to really good homes i mean i've already found rehomed some of these we're trying to put this video out so you guys see this all before it's completely broken up yeah we're immortalizing this comic fam for you slap that like button yeah and outside of battlefront we also had a navy action run which oh. again would probably be the highest graded and this is a great russ heath cover too this yeah is man a this is classic one. dude this is one that on on show floors people are hunting for man six five classic like battle tank cover just war going on planes going down missiles firing the color scheme is amazing all right, like you mentioned, the imagery is outstanding. There's just something about it that grabs you and captivates you. The negative space of all the soldiers highlighting that shadow work that we were just discussing. That Navy action is one of the two probably most coveted in the run. And when we talk about war, like f for these war ones, you know, there's the Russ Heath collector that loves the Russ Heath artwork. So they have to have these. All right, the Joe Manilis. But there is an extra violent side to flamethrower covers. That's a whole nother collectible. Tanks, paratroopers, like we mentioned. Yeah, bazookas, train covers. I even have a book here with a train on it. That's a great cover. Dude, there's some big train collectors out there. 6.5, second highest behind a lone seven. All right, I don't even know what guide is on it. Dude, guide says $85 for a 6.5. Okay, so $85, as we've seen, is way off. All right, and for the amount of demand I have for that book, and I've heard... I would say 6.5, I'd conservatively put it at 1,200, 1,500. Holy smokes, man. You killed it with this collection. This is super impressive and a privilege to see. And you got so many more. I'm excited to take some like video shots for the community to see all these put together for one last time. Yeah, I feel super blessed and lucky to have kind of come into this and things work out as well as I did because there was a lot of factors that possibly wouldn't have. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Staying Alive. Okay, John Travolta. Of course. Dancing movie, all right? And do yourself a uh, favor, fam, comic fam, if you want to see this movie, start at one hour and 14 minutes if you want to see some glorious John Travolta. And if you still can't wait that long, go to one hour and 21 minutes because even from then on, it's fantastic. But this is what I felt like at the end of the movie after he just crushes this dance scene. All right. This, this uh, female actress there, all right, for playing whatever role she's playing, she goes, what are you going to do now to him? He's just like flips his collar type of thing. He's just like, I'm going to strut. And he just like kicks open the door and starts strutting down the street. I got to tell you, man, that's how I felt when I got these grades.
man. I was refreshing <laughs> CGC's page all day, every day. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to get. I don't know what I'm going to get. Please, 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 please. Hope, Comic hope, fam, hope. if you even knew, like this guy telling me from the beginning you when he got the call to, oh my gosh, these were these were really nice. I really hope, like I have a good feeling to the point where you're like, oh, no, no, there's no update yet. There's no update to, oh my gosh, Tom, this is crazy. This is bigger than I thought. And then it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't even know what I had. Like, it's it's that big. I, it, it's got to be a really good feeling. Yeah, it's outstanding. And then getting the opportunity to look at these, I, I got to point out one cool cover. I mean, it's nothing super special. but It's like, a the, tank cover, man. It's so dope. It's a tank cover. It's by Carl Burgos. Okay, I, I don't know if it gets a lot of love or not, but I believe that might be highest graded at 8.5. Gorgeous book. It's just a cool, cool tank cover. I kind of like tank covers, especially when they're approaching, like, you know, the enemies and just kind of looming. Like, I just can't even imagine that scenario when a tank is coming at you. Absolutely, man. I mean, the cover works great. All these, dude, they're off-white pages. You know, it, the quality that's here it doesn't even make sense. And what a cool thing to see. Comic fam, are you into war comic books? Are you into Golden Age comic books? How did the guru do? Give him a congratulations. Give him an attaboy in the comment section below. And you know what? Maybe next time there's a big find like this, you'll do what you did this time around and run to the table before you disperse them to show it to the community. You mentioned collecting. And there's risk when buying in a collection like this, especially because I didn't get to see it in person. I had to buy it via pictures and a spreadsheet, go buy this person's grading because he had it in hand. And you always kind of have to hedge your bets a little bit on that, whether the grading's accurate or not. I put in the work. I put in a lot of work. I took the risk. Luckily, it worked out because this does not happen often. It just doesn't. I've been I've been burned before, and you know you you'll you'll come up some. You will, and that's why we do this because we know what we're doing. We've taken the time to educate ourselves. So there's percentages in your wins. Sometimes they're just much greater than others. So I was really lucky with this, and going by what I knew, I I was just like, okay, this is what I can do to get into it. it just seems fair. Everybody was happy about it. So I'm excited to get that all wrapped up, and really happy to bring something historical like this to the community so you guys can all see it and really get an idea and feel for what's going on in the war community right now. Comic fam, hit that subscribe button, slap that like button. I have a maestro issue number one variant going out to a lucky member who does those things. Which one of these golden age goodies was your favorite cover? Are you into war? We want to hear from you in the comment section below. And as always, geek responsibly. Enough. Said. Guys, if you want to watch some other videos that are going to entertain you through your long days while your kids are Zooming at school, why don't you do some comic education and watch these vids here? Help you learn some stuff about the industry, about comics, about prices. And if you want to get comics in the mail, be part of our community at the Mystery Mail Call. Check out the description. Down below has got a link. Join the community.